Today we're getting to a video that has taken me a long time to get to. It's something that I have been thinking through for a really long time because I didn't quite know how I wanted to approach it. This is a very big subject and I was like, I can go really small with this or I can go really big with this. I decided to go big because as my grandma used to say, go big or go home, right? So today we're gonna be talking about how to put together your home bar and I decided that we were gonna do this into a multi-part video series where we really talk about the intricacies of putting together your home bar. I decided that the video that would be the most helpful to you guys would be something where we would talk about how to stock your bar, everything from spirits to tools, to make the widest variety of cocktails possible. And I wanna say this is kind of a little bit of a disclaimer. Building a home bar is really expensive, and if you guys just went out and bought everything that I recommend in this whole video series all at once, you would spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. My own home bar is something that took me years of building, and I geared the Educated Bar Fly toward sort of building your home bar one cocktail at a time. I think that it's very possible to just center your bar on one bottle of spirits that you really like, and then uh, a few you know, citrus juices and some simple syrup, uh, stuff that you can make at home and you can make a wide variety of cocktails of that and then you slowly kind of upgrade it. And so we started with the series Master the Classics where you can just go in and just go one classic at a time. The thing is, is that I realize a lot of people tend to look at the videos and then try and find just as many videos as they can on one bottle of spirits and they run out of those spirits. So I think that the most important thing and the reason why this is the first video is your workhorse spirits that are high quality, low cost spirits that you can easily replace that aren't gonna be a big drama. These are the things that are gonna be rotating in and out of your bar and they're at a reasonable price. So I recognize that we have worldwide subscribership on this channel and I just wanna say that I can only speak toward what's available in the markets that I know or in my own market really and then what is uh, what are the price points in my market. These. Price points are obviously gonna fluctuate depending on where you are in the country or where you are in the world, and the same thing for availability. I tried to choose some spirits for you guys today that should be widely available, and I also wrote an article for our website. If you wanna take a deep dive into this subject, you can. I've added a lot of runner-up bottles because a lot of people in the comments the last time we did this, we're like, what about this bottle? What about this bottle? And you know what? Everybody is right. There are a lot of different bottles. There's not just however many bottles. I'm just showing you my picks. I have actually alternate picks. I just didn't want to put it into this video and make it 50 minutes long. So go to our website, check that out, and you will be more than satisfied. I, th I think that's it, Marius, right? Did I, did I, did I miss anything? All right, let's get into, let's get into talking about the spirits. The first bottle that I chose is Old Granddad Bonded Bourbon. This is one of my absolute favorites. I've been using it for many, many, many years. What I really like about this bourbon is that it's 27% rye in its mash bill, and so it is a high rye bourbon. So it has all of those lovely qualities of bourbon. You get the vanilla, you get the caramel, and you get the oak as well, obviously, but then you also get this really spicy dryness on the back palate. It is a very big in flavor profile, which really speaks to my personal tastes. So in an old fashioned, it really stands out. Uh, it's spicy enough in a Manhattan that if you don't do your Manhattan with rye, it can kind of stand in for it. It is very versatile in a lot of different cocktails. It is my 100% favorite and you can get it for about 23 bucks a bottle. It's easy to drink and yet you still feel the proof and it's really great quality for its price range. So the next category we're gonna be talking about is gin. You definitely need to have gin in your arsenal. There are so many different classic cocktails. I would venture to say that most classic cocktails are made with gin if it's a light spirit. Gin is your friend and you're gonna to wanna to do a London dry gin. So London dry gin is, I guess what they would call gin in its purest form. It can't have any additives. It has to have a main flavor profile of juniper. And a lot of the London Dry's brand to brand use a very similar botanicals in their distillation process. So you get kind of an even flavor. So I think a lot of the people that don't like Beefeater kind of get caught up in this view that it's an old man's low quality gin and nothing could be further from the truth. It has a really nice, juniper flavor to it. It's really bitey at 88 proof, and it has a lot of citrus in its flavor profile, which makes it very easy to either mix in something like a martini or in shaken drinks. It is super versatile, and at $16 a bottle, you really can't say no to it. There's somewhat of a gin renaissance going on right now, and a lot of distilleries are making it. Uh, and if you get quality gin, the price point is going to be a little higher. You can easily spend 30 to 40 to $60 on a bottle of really good quality gin, and so for something that is high quality, versatile, and low cost, I think Beefeater is gonna be your best friend. 
So you're definitely gonna have to have good quality tequila for your home bar. And when we're talking about good quality tequila, we have to up the price range a little bit just because the increased demand of tequila means uh, more expensive raw materials, more expensive raw materials obviously translates to the bottle. And you also wanna make sure that you are drinking it ethically. What I mean by that is that sustainability is a big problem when it comes to tequila. And there's a lot of producers that are now trying to do things a little bit more ethically. It takes agave between seven and 20 years to mature depending on the variety of agave you're growing. And so it's really important to make sure that you uh, support companies that do things in a sustainable way. It's very easy to just cut all the agave, make tequila out of it, and everyone else be damned. But honestly, if a lot of tequila producers do that, then we're gonna have no more agave, it's gonna go extinct. And so uh, I like to support a brand that has 100% uh, estate grown agave. So Enter Tequila Arete is really, really good quality. It's gonna be very versatile in all your drinks. It has a nice light minerality to it with a little bit of citrus fruits on the back end. It's just really nice and light. It is very versatile in cocktails, it goes really well in margaritas and palomas. And at 19.50 a bottle, that's what I got this, 19.50. So I would say that the price range is probably gonna be about like 19 to $25, depending on your market. It is well below what most tequilas are at now, which I think the median price range is probably about 34 bucks, especially for those that are single estate grown. So I would definitely pick up a bottle of this. Next bottle up, Rittenhouse Rye. This is one of my absolute favorite bottles. Obviously, we're gonna go back into the American whiskey category. Your collection's not complete without a bottle of rye. So many, I would say all, most whiskey cocktails that are classics are uh, uh, rye based because that was the most prevalent whiskey at the time. This Rittenhouse Rye is a 23 to $25 bottle. This is a bourbon drinker's rye. Uh, unlike a lot of other ryes, which are gonna be really, really, really dry and really spicy on the back end, this has a nice spiciness to it and a proofiness to it. It has this inherent bourbonness to it, and that's because of its mash bill. Its mash bill is 51% rye, which is the legal minimum for something being considered rye whiskey or labeled as rye whiskey. Well, labeled as straight rye whiskey anyway. But it also consists of 37% corn, so it's a high corn rye, which is gonna give you that not, a little bit of sweetness, and you kind of get that bourbon feel to it. It makes a fantastic Manhattan, it makes a fantastic Old Fashioned, and this is my absolute go-to bottle. For the price, you cannot pass it up. Now it's time to talk about some rum. You are definitely gonna need some rum for your uh, home bar and white rum is probably the most versatile. The Plantation Three Star is what I keep on hand for uh, a lot of different cocktails. Now I've been avoiding talking about this particular subject because I consider myself a novice when it comes to rum. Marius is telling me to twist the bottle so you guys can see the label. It's just a very good idea. I was avoiding talking about rum because I consider myself a rum novice. Embarrassingly, when I was working at Coles, I kind of just took the rum that we had on hand and learned a little bit about Jamaican rum, learned a little bit about rum from Barbados, a little bit about Bermuda rum, and then uh, whatever white rum we had in there, but I didn't really pay attention to the category up until about three or four years ago, and then I really started to expand my own rum collection and then also pay more attention to it, really take a deep dive into it. But I still consider myself quite a novice. What do I say about Plantation Three Star? It is a blend of rums from Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados. It's just a really nice light flavor profile. It goes well in a lot of cocktails. You can make a mojito with it. You can make a uh, Queens Park Swizzle with it. You can make it's basically like any well rum drink. The thing is, is that when it comes to rum drinks, Rum is such a category that is so diverse region to region, uh, and there are absolutely no hard and fast rules about how it's created that really no two rums are equal. And I will, I will tell you that, you know, if you go down the rum rabbit hole, you are gonna end up with a massive selection of rums because all of them are so diverse and so different. For something that's in this price range at about 23 bucks, it is versatile enough and cheap enough that you can readily replace it and make a lot of cocktails with it. All right guys, so that's our video on Workhorse Spirits and part one of how to build your home bar. Join us for the next episode, which will be on tools, all the tools you're gonna need to have a fully functioning cocktail bar at your house. 